So, you've been playing Dredge and you want to get ahead of everyone before the Power Reach DLC? Well, you've come to the right place. Here's 6 useful tips for you to make Dredge a little bit easier for you and give yourself the best start before the DLC. The first tip is to help you make the game less tedious. Remember all the spells you get from the collector? Well, they are actually super useful in the game with little to no repercussion. The most it does is increase panic one stage at most. When you're in a tight spot in the middle of the night, just use the manifest ability and you teleport straight to Blackstone Isle, where you can literally sleep the panic off. It fast forwards the time a bit as well, but not as much as doing the whole journey to a port would, as that has the enemies and everything like that, while just teleporting just saves you in real life time and everything else. Uh, the second is the Banish ability. It's a lifesaver when you reach the notoriously horrendous island that is Devil's Spine. Those damn little fish are like heat seeking missiles with how fast they can attach to your ship and slow you down but with a well timed banish spell, the fish and its mother literally can't do anything to you. It really makes the devil's spine a much easier location and getting the flames much faster. Finally, the haste spell is your best friend. When you have high levels of lumen, which is easily accomplished in the mid game to late game with the tungsten floodlight and cloudy lens combo or an incandescent lens. Or, if you fancy, the flame of the sky that you get from the tower in Devil's Spine. Haste does not increase panic at a high rate, and you can basically burst it every time you want to use it at night, and it still won't increase your panic too much. Where it shines though is the daytime. Since daytime decreases panic, along with the lights turned on, you can use haste forever basically, without worrying about the panic, and makes the journey across islands so much easier. Second tip is to help you fill out your encyclopedia easier. If you have a specific aberration that you want to catch, but can never catch it conventionally, well there is always the option to use Atrophy spell, which will basically guarantee aberration of the fish you used it on. However, this has a cooldown of around half a day, and that spot that you used it on will be un unavailable for a while, so a rare fish like the moonfish, sunfish, sharks, and sailfish will become even harder to find. If you don't care about the money you get, there's also a secret way too. If you get an infected fish from fishing or at night time when something slithers on your boat, the infection can spread to your other fish in the cargo. Usually this makes the other fish decrease in price, but if you have a golden fish of the species you want an aberration for, you can place that next to the infected fish and wait a few hours. And when it gets infected, there is a high chance that it mutates into an aberration of that fish. This just makes it easier to finish the encyclopedia easier. Okay, on to tip number three. Panic at night time in this game is actually quite harmless in the mid game. You shouldn't be afraid of the night in this game prior to the DLC, as the only things that can damage you are actually not that common. The red flounder, the phantom shark, aberration water spouts, deep sea tentacles, and the boat angler are the only ones that can hurt you. This is especially useful in the early game where you want to maximize your profits in the day and start finishing the encyclopedia as fast as possible as nighttime fish are worth a bit more than their daytime counterparts and aberrations are easier to see as a chromatic mist hovering above a fishing spot is easier to spot in the nighttime. As for after the DLC, well that we will need to find out as they might increase the difficulty of the nighttime with more enemies or something else. Uh, we'll just have to find out when the DLC releases later this today. Tip number four adds on to tip number three, as panic can be beneficial in the game. Remember those black stones that dot every island and is basically useless when you touch it when you're insane? Well, with a high enough panic, these stones glow with a red aura and can now give visions that explain the lore of the island and are quite interesting to read if you love the Lovecraftian feel of this game. Oh, also be wary of that crab that imitates one of the stones. He scared the shit out of me when I encountered it thinking it was just another rock. Tip number 5 is to frequently visit the dry dock or the traveling merchant, as these places act as free storage for your materials. When you go out and do a dredging haul for a day, instead of just storing all your material in the storage space that you have and cluttering up everything for other important items, uh, once you fill them all up, then you can always just upgrade and then you have even more space to store your materials. And if you completely upgraded your ship, 
well, then you don't even need the materials in the first place. You can just sell those to the shipwright for a bit of change, but at that stage of the game, you're basically set on money and you don't really have much to do anyways. And last but not least is tip number six. For those people who love to collect the crabs for the paint or fish for the Shadow Wizard money gang on each of the archipelagos, here's something that will make it 10 times as easier and also helps you complete the encyclopedia a bit faster. First is to finish researching the trawling nets. The one that you need for completing the encyclopedia and for the most space is the final unlock which allows you to trawl oceanic fish. There are three unique species that cannot be fished and those are the aurora jellyfish, anchovy and scarlet prawns. These three still elude me in my playthrough as you need to infect them or trawl an aberration as there is no other way to get these three fish. The trawling net also allows you to store fish in there to keep fresh. To do this, you must put them in the storage and then store them again in the net. This keeps them fresh forever and you won't have to worry about your fish rotting away into nothing before you reach the painter or before you reach the four wizards that you say. They're not wizards, they're more like cultists, some weird like amalgamation of uh, something. I don't know what they are at that point. They're just like <laughs> monsters, I think. And also, due to the new updates, they also don't have limited time quests, so you can take as long as you want to get those fish, as they won't starve in the new update. However, you still need to remember not to sell all your fish at the same time if you have them in your net. Uh, this still gets me every time, sometimes I always just sell all and then my aberration crabs or the fish that I need, they get sold and you can't get them again. So you have to be careful of that and it's the only few times I rage at myself and at this game. Thank you so much for watching this and I hope everyone enjoys the Pale Reach DLC when that comes out and hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day. See you next time.